After 12 years of work and a two-year process of external anonymous review, it's out. And in a radically different and elegant way, our work puts forward how much sea level rise is coming to coastlines around the world. It's by now widely known that Greenland ice loss is among the largest sources of global sea level rise. Yet, confidence in future projections of sea level rise is obscured by a variety of limitations in ice sheet modeling. Alternatively, by our approach, using measurements and a robust glacier theory, we can solve for the ice loss commitment that is implicit in what we can observe. From satellite imagery, our study mapped the snow line across Greenland in 20 different years. In a high melt year like this one, the snow line is pushed higher up the ice sheet by melting, and so the area accumulating mass from snow is less. We see this accumulation area ratio changing on this vertical axis, and on the horizontal axis, we have the observed ice sheet mass balance. And on the graph where there is equal snow accumulation and ice loss, we have an equilibrium. Here you can see a statistical property of the data. The accumulation area ratio in the condition of mass balance. The equilibrium accumulation area ratio. Now for the current shape of the ice sheet to be in equilibrium with climate, the accumulation area ratio should equal the equilibrium accumulation area ratio. But as you can see, for Greenland, like nearly all ice masses on Earth, the observed accumulation area ratio is less than the equilibrium. This tells us the ice sheet has to shrink to reach a new equilibrium. Now here's the elegant part. The ratio of the average AAR to the equilibrium AAR directly quantifies the area change required for the ice flow to reshape this ice mass for it to be in equilibrium with this new climate. If climate stayed constant at this recent average, the ice sheet would equilibrate its shape through its flow to this new climate state. The power of this disequilibrium approach lies in how surface climate perturbations that express themselves as AAR fluctuations are effectively instantaneous as compared to the time it takes for the ice to flow into and reach a new configuration, one that is in balance with this new climate state. This disequilibrium snapshot is true today for Greenland as the Arctic climate really didn't start heating up until the past two decades. The flow and shape readjustments are not nearly in equilibrium, thus the zombie ice. In the virtually certain event that climate continues warming, the sea level commitment only grows. The sea level rise commitment we determine stands regardless of any foreseeable future climate pathway this century. This water is in the pipeline and technically already beginning its way under the bridge and eventually out to sea. While our method can't provide a time scale for the sea level rise, observational evidence suggests the majority of this committed ice loss and sea level rise can occur this century. Our findings in comparison to current sea level projections confront us with a shocking reality. The much larger already locked in sea level rise than what ice sheet models project by end of century even under high carbon emissions. Our numbers are twice as large and don't even include future warming. The comparison reinforces the likelihood that ice sheet models don't deliver ice quickly enough and for a number of known reasons, like today's models don't realistically treat underwater melting, bare ice darkening, ice internal heating from increasing meltwater infiltration, and basal lubrication, to name a few. Several other insights from this study, I'm putting in other videos, 
in the channel linked below entitled Faster Than Forecast.